What's up guys? We are on site at this six unit project. A lot going on. This is one of many projects we're doing and you might wonder, how do you manage it all? Well, that's what we're gonna answer in vlog 18. All right, Sunil, we've got a crazy amount of projects, right? Mm -hmm. How many active projects are we doing right now where there's you know dirt moving around, buildings being built? What's, mm -hmm. what's the number? I, a, I can't even count them. I know, you, you lose track. Uh, thank God I don't lose track. Uh, we have about 14 right now, 14 active projects, and we have two more that are in the pipeline coming up as well that actually haven't started yet. So we got a lot going on. So there could be 16. I mean, you, it would probably take you three days just to go visit all of them with DC traffic, right? Yeah. They're not, they're not all close. <laughs> Absolutely, you just can't do this. You need to build a team to really manage the projects like this, especially that many projects. And these aren't even small projects, they're, they're pretty big. I mean, as you mentioned, this itself is a six unit project, which is one of our smaller ones. So how do you manage that many? Well, we build a team, that's the key thing. So we hired uh, our first full-time project manager last fall, Sid, who's not here right now. Uh, but we hired our second project manager who is here right now, Jessica, um, about uh, maybe about a month ago now, right? Or not even, so she just started with us. So uh, what Jessica's done, for example, she's taken over this particular project. Now this is kind of off of Sid's plate uh, and she manages it pretty much, I'd say 90, 95%. Sid still has some input. Uh, I still help out, but she's kind of taken this one over. So uh, that's how we can scale and get more and more uh, projects done with uh, you know, building a team. And you know, as you and I have talked about, we're probably gonna be adding even more people in the fall because we're gonna have more and more projects coming up. So how many projects are are you managing right now, Jessica? How many sites are you going to a week? Um, two, but also overflowing with helping Sid, and then also permits in the office. That's a lot of work, just getting the permits, doing everything with DCRA. Yeah, that's another unfortunate thing about construction is, and, and, and this you know gets directly built into your home prices, by the way, is about half of the time is spent in the plans and permitting in, in your city or county or wherever you are. A lot of people aren't aware of that, so mm -hmm. a lot of your time is pulling permits, communicating, you know, responding to comments, and then out in the field. What are you doing when you're out in the field? Um, putting out fires. <laughs> Actually, we try not and prevent real fires. fires. Not, not fire? real fires. No, no, no. Actually, we try and prevent fires right. from even happening. You know, we're all about implementing systems and trying to, you know, just have things work like a well, well or machine so we can scale. I saw you earlier actually look like you're putting a camera up there, right? So that is, that, we like about? to implement technology and we like to put cameras at our sites for safety. Um, also helps us keep up with compliance, see if something's going on with the site, you know, so we can address any possible issues as soon as they happen because we have cameras on site. Yeah, you can even remotely log in, right? And you can see the site if you're not even here, yes. you can check something real quick. So it's been a great benefit to have the cameras here in real time. You know, as you were talking about permitting, that really, really is one of the bigger costs in the project because we can almost almost build this project in the same amount of time it takes to get the permit. So it's, it's kind of crazy how that's almost half the project compared to uh, the actual build time of the project. So uh, that is something that really increased our costs. And one of, one of the things we were we implemented in the last six to eight months, I think, uh, was this practice of going out, getting a good deal under contract, seeing what kind of contingencies we could build in and, and kind of pushing that close date out, but then starting on the permits during that time. And, and how, how has that worked? And has, has Jessica been able, been able to help yeah. with that? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's kind of a uh, strategy we use that helps us be successful is that we can compress that time cycle. Because again, let's just say for, the, for this project, for example, if it takes us six months to get the permit and then six months to build it, that's 12 months. But if we can compress that or overlap, then it decreases the overall time. And one of the projects that we just are taking on now, we've got it under contract and we've already put in uh, two different permits. One is a foundation permit. Number two is the full permit. And actually we're about to get the foundation permit probably in the next 30 days and we won't even have closed in the project yet. So that means that as soon as we buy it, we can actually start work. So that helps compress that cycle down quite a bit. So we're saving time in the field with more managers and you know Jessica here, Sid who's afraid of the camera and, 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 and Sunil, but then we're... <laughs> so be like, hey! <laughs> but we're also saving time you know, before we even get to the field. Uh, so you can see why this is important to have a, a good management team. What's you know the typical person out there starting out, maybe they're doing their own projects. How many, how many can you manage or, or have you seen other people been able to manage before they need to go out and hire, okay. hire more help and start yeah. building the team? I feel like, especially if you're doing is there your projects, because it's not just project management. So now you've got to find the deals, you got to finance the deals, you got to sell the deals. So there's a lot more when you're doing it yourself. 
I would say like the max, max is about four to five projects that you could do, manage yourself, plus do all the other work. Uh, if you're just managing projects, maybe like seven or eight, but anything past that, it really gets overwhelming. It also depends on the size of the project. If you're doing, you know, like a small, what a small rehab, paint and carpet type of thing, yeah, that, that's much easier than something like this where there's a lot of moving parts here. Jessica, what do you think are some of the key things that you do or people out there listening that are maybe managing their own projects or thinking about hiring a manager? What are some of those key things that you, know, you do to make sure projects go smoothly, on time, on budget, as much as possible? Um, I think it's very important to build good relationships so you can have a successful project from your suppliers to anybody you're working with, especially even on your team. It's very important. Um, another one is um, documentation of your projects so you know where everything's at and also so Sunil can walk up and say where are we at our projects you can just look at it and see a full view picture of everything mm -hmm. instead of getting lost in the tiny details um, he's too busy for that <laughs> too busy for anything these days <laughs> the number one most important thing in this field is communication communication between your team between your subcontractors between anybody working with you and communication to your office so that's like the most one of the most important things mm -hmm say so for sure. Yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot that goes on to managing your projects. If you remember a couple episodes ago, I think it was vlog 16, we talked about overall what it takes to be a developer, right? You gotta find deals, you gotta fund them, you gotta build them, you gotta sell them. Today, I hope we're able to provide some insight on what it takes to build the deals, the way to build a, a team to do it when you scale. And stay tuned for our next vlog where we're gonna go into more details on part of the construction process. Remember to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.